Welcome aboard. I would... Is that the look I give on the? I, I don't. I never pose for this photo. What I think there's doing AI that? in involved. That's the photo they've used. That still of me signed on. There's no way I pose for that. Very I'm saying strange. sports bet AI. Uh, thank you, every. It's so hard to get these two up. They said, "How can we possibly bring ourselves to do the podcast now that we're TV stars?" After a le- the, taking over from the Matty John show last Thursday. Thank you very much. Uh, very nice audience tuned in on Easter Thursday. Uh, Sean did say afterwards, hopefully they get a better guest on Matty next week and it might give us an even bigger audience. <laughs> well, I'll, I stay out of that sort of politics. <laughs> I stay out of that. But uh, Joel Kane, hello to you. Dan, uh, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, whatever the case may be. Uh, ready for another big show. And uh, look, uh, it was a tricky round last week. Very tricky. But uh, that's okay. We're back on again. It was a good week, but I love that weekend. Can I jump straight in? Because you mentioned the TV show. Let's not beat around the bush. We're on the we're on the prime time now, but we're being oh. given, <laughs> we've been given we've been given a little clip for Have the we? mentioning of the main body last week. Now this is an email everyone knows you can email in, get them on site at sportsbet.com.au. Yes. But if you wouldn't mind if I can just read back, yeah, read yes. out some feedback. Yes. The subject, the full stop, main full stop body. Mm. So you, in all capitals I might add. Well here we are. Don't get us wrong, we're happy for your success. The little engine that could. From the basement of the blue and yellow, you've risen to prime time. And to be honest, we should have seen it coming. When the new watch appeared on Sean's arm after season two, <laughs> we always knew it was a rocket ship to the top of the media landscape. We just hoped it might not mean a relegation for the, fi- for the foundational followers. Now it goes on, so I've had to paraphrase it here, but then he jumps into, we've been here well before the big five betters in Cronulla. We've been here from the kids' first touch footy jerseys to the big state championship wins. So despite how much this hurts, we're proud of you. We wish you the best of luck up there in the big smoke, but we have heard you loud and clear and we'll be on our way to second grade. So he's not happy. Well done, farewell, and most importantly, gamble responsibly. So we're at risk at losing people here. So I just think we have to bring back the sort of egos a bit, Dan. Yes, we're on TV. Who who wrote that? This is an avid listener. He, He goes by the name Joaquin. Joaquin Kelly is his. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. He's a, he's a pseudonym. Ah, uh, yes, yes, um, yes. So he's not I happy. I feel like there's an inside joke here that I'm not part of. No. This is office humour, and I've no, never it's worked not. in an office. He's just a disgruntled listener who just doesn't want to be forgotten about. So, yes, we've hit the big time. <laughs> Says you. <laughs> Let's not. See, <laughs> see, I joke when I talk about the egos he means on the <laughs> Behind every joke, there's a half truth. <laughs> yes, unbelievable. Uh, I just think we just just temper it a little bit. So we, we, haven't, we haven't forgotten. We, we, I haven't changed at all. Uh, we. I haven't changed at all. Uh, and of course, we're a big Thursday night game, Melbourne Brisbane. Uh, so we'll be on. Uh, each and every Thursday after Matty John. So uh, thank you again for tuning in. And if you see something throughout the week, uh, his email, which is overflowing, I don't know, you might might as well not send it because apparently, it, what, what do you say? It's bursting, uh, bursting at the bursting, seams. Bursting then. at the seams. Get them on site <laughs> at sportsbet.com.au. Can I make a revelation here? I'm not punting well this year and I've got the reason why. Well, <laughs> maybe I'm just not a good judge. That's very possible. Uh, but also, we've started putting our bets on the new sports bet product called The Feed, which is excellent. Excellent. So um, go there on the app, uh, very easy to use, and you can follow. I see you've got a lot of followers, Sean, um, and you've got your fair share too, but you go on there and you see some of the bets that we put up, and sometimes right. we put some of the reasons why. And this is part of the deal this year is that we have to do it. I'm finding, I don't know about you two, I'm finding I'm betting scared, and scared <laughs> money is dead money, right? That's... It, because now it's on show. So your psyche's changed just because it's Completely of this. changed. Completely changed. Paralysis by analysis. I'm going to be honest with the audience because I'm always honest with the audience. There may have been a bonus bets arrangement in the past with sports <laughs> bet, long time ago, and that may have judged my cavalier attitude to throwing a lot of shies at the stumps, as you would call it, on Golden Point and, you know, just exact margins. Say, say Thursday, Melbourne by eight, and that would be $17 or something in that <laughs> route, right? And most of the time, yeah. it would lose and it wouldn't matter. But when it hit, it was bountiful and it was fun. Now I'm finding I'm not enjoying footy because we're putting our cojones on the line. Yes. Are you, you finding your strategy, Joel, has hey, changed the all? What do you say about pressure, Joel? Pressure. Some eat it, some get eaten by it. Oh, he's getting gobbled up. Yeah, he? he's getting gobbled up. In this case, yes. Yes. Yes, so I've gone back this week on the feed. 
Golden Point, Dolphins, Tigers. <laughs> I don't care anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to bet the way I normally bet, which is a bit of fun. And if they lose and they get embarrassingly uh, beaten, I don't care. What about so Dan my going to has changed. You go into a sports psychologist say, Dan, what sport do you play? <laughs> oh, I don't. I'm just tipping at the moment. <laughs> Same day, multi. Yeah. No, but think about the flip side, Dan. When that game does go to Golden Point, imagine this, the, the, the euphoric feeling you're going to have having put it up there on the feed for everyone to see. Hey, by so the that's way, the, flip side. the punters who want to have that same feeling, you can also set your own profile up. Yep. So it's not just yep. us. Yes. The, the punters out there listening can also set up their own profile as well and uh, have your own feed. Mm. I'm not sure I need that attitude from Sean, by the way, and we'll find out why when we do so right, so wrong. <laughs> Uh, what a magic day it was on Monday. I walked into that ground. You know what it's like, Joel. You walk into a ground and you just get a feeling. Now, you said this well before the game, but you just get a feeling about we're going to see a special game and we're going to see an upset. Yes. That we saw. The West Tigers thoroughly deserved that win and Joel was all over it. They have no fears against Parramatta. I have to be on the Tigers for this. Caesar from right in front. Got it. Caesar's the moment. He strikes it and drags it to the left-hand side. The West Tigers win. The Benji Marshall era is in full swing. Well done. Cruel. Cruel it could have been for the Tigers. Oh, but oh can yeah, you imagine very they cruel. got beaten by that? Kick, that was a 75% kick, I reckon, from there. But do you, No, the kick predictor on uh, our radio station said 21%. No way. 38 metres. The kick predictor needs a Pyth- tune-up. Pythagoras. We well, missed it by a mile. Yeah, that, yeah that's a 75% got, kick. For Clint Gutherson. For Clint Gutherson. Oh, a part-timer. He, he would kick that 7 out of 10 times. All right. Let's go. Time. Okay. For charity. Yep. We'll put 500 bucks up, your 500 versus my 500. Clint's a good bloke. Yep. We'll take him to Combank training from that exact spot. Yep. He gets closer to 21% than 75% from that spot. No way. 38 well, metres we'll, out, we've got to six make... metres in from touch. Oh, we've mate, I'd be pot, the, over th- the over three and a half, two and a half, I'm all in on that. And again, pressure. Some eat it, some get eaten by it. <laughs> that's a 50 metre kick. Well, it's probably, that's close to a four, well, 45 metre kick minimum. From in front, yes. I'm saying. To yeah, get it over the. I'm saying he's got to get it was 40, 38 metres why out did he pull it? from touch. Why did he pull it? You know why he pulled yeah, because it? Because he had to get the distance. Okay. And when they try and get the. You're a goal kicker, you know this. See you Monday morning, Clint, down yeah. there at Combank Stadium. Well, you, hang go. on, you were one of our very good goal kickers. Were you even 75% career? No. But that, that's taking in a lot of sideline. That, that, that kick is a 75% kick. That is worse than a sideline kick. No. 38 metres out, no. six in from touch. No. You're a better judge than this, no. Joel. I'm you cautious. are a far I'm, I'm better judge than this. I'm cautious not to go up against the, a great goal kicker. I'm mm. very cautious. I would have it closer to a toss of the coin, I think, yeah. from that range. Mm. I, offers there. Let's get Clint involved. <laughs> that's me sitting right on the fence. Yes. That, that is, <laughs> well, he'll do it. He'll do it. We'll tell, we'll tell you your favourite charity. We'll, pick, we'll get Clint to pick the okay. charity. Yeah. We're in. I'm in. Okay. Clint, Gibbo, over to you. Gibbo, we'll get that organised. as well. We'll and go down. We'll, re- we'll even record a segment, right? Like fan style, yeah. bossy style. We'll go to Combank and we'll get him. Perfect. Right. And it was breezy. I want breezy conditions. Oh, it's breezy. It's unlike us to steal a Voss segment. Uh, yes. Hey, that's your domain. Uh, but you were so right with that. But I tell you what, we did it again. I'm having a bad year, but even I'm getting some of our best bets. We're all pretty much all cleaning up. Have to be on the dogs, plus six and a half, Dan. Um, hopefully I can kick us off to a fly. South with the win, 2016. I don't have much trust in the Dolphins, but I just think that line is ridiculous. It is a convincing 30 to 14 win over their Queensland rivals. We almost got an important to some reference uh, re- the, at the end of that game. Now I know you are, but sometimes you've got to just keep them, keep them, uh, be mean to keep them keen. Um, when we had the great escape on Good Friday, and we're all on the dogs plus six and a half. We all thought, well, here we go. That's it. I always think in a multi, you need a luck, a bit of luck. Of course. Right? And we had our luck. So when Canberra led 18-0, <laughs> I thought, well, it's done. It's absolutely done. And uh, Sean, Sean let us down. 
Not Canberra. I'm with the Raiders. I didn't want to get too far ahead of myself and put up a head-to-head. -head. Really wanted to be on the Bulldogs, but you've uh, had that one, Sugar. Raiders plus four and a half. Little bit of insurance. Bending this back. Bending this back. You know it's your night. Cronulla 36 have taken down the Canberra Raiders 22. Mm. Yeah, if you want to look at it that way. I had 22 and a half points up my side. Oh, yuck. Still gets chinned. That one at half time, that kick, it was yeah. like a remote control coming back. You yeah. knew it was all over there. That was it. When Hines kept plonking him from the sideline, I was thinking, it's not going to be yeah. a night. Like, you needed just one of those early to miss. Because you're doing your maths and you're going four and a half. If he misses a conversion, all right, they can win 22-18. Maybe Canberra can jag a try. Uh, it's just the great leveller, isn't it? Always punting. Because yep. on the couch, I was sitting there watching it. I, the, head, I, the head was just, with every try they scored, it was just getting bigger and bigger. The wobble was starting <laughs> yeah. to occur. Didn't want to, I had it hovered over the WhatsApp uh, group, yeah, I will. but didn't want to go there because I know we all know how that, or that, how they generally end. But the rest is history. That's just Raider hater come. It is. Oh, it's a p poetry. Yeah. Isn't but it? but why, do, why should we? We've got to pay for it. Why should we have to pay I for know. it? All I needed, you know what I needed, Joel? Because I had a little investment on that best bet multi. I just needed to be 18 nil at half time. Yes. And then I start looking at the odds, and then I, I start looking at uh, alternate. Can you imagine the odds of Cronulla minus four and a half alternate? I'm getting 20 to one or something. Maybe not odds. that much, but yeah. I'm getting significant odds and I don't care. Mm. But they couldn't even get 18 nil to half time. Ricky, I'm with you. He, he hammered the team. I'm with you. You have the full support of the Get Em On Side board. <laughs> All right, a couple of issues uh, before we get to a pretty good round uh, in round number five. Well, we talked about Tigers. The question is how far can they go? We had this funny habit in rugby league and pretty much any sport. I mean, when a team wins one in a row, everything's great. When they win, one, when they lose one in a row, the house is on fire. Well, they've won two in a row, Joel. I'm not completely sold on them, but I love the way. I love the way they're defended. That's what's different about this version. Yeah, like I love the Tigers. Galvin's obviously huge for the team. Um, but we just need to temper it a little bit. Sharky's a bit of an off night. No Hamlin Ueli. Hunt comes out of the warm-up. Uh, they did a great job on Nico Hines. And then last week, no Moses. So Moses is huge. Yeah, with, so with the ball, they kept on coughing up in a, a, about three or four times in the first half. It was on about 40 or halfway. Mitchell Moses is playing that game. Yeah, Sunny yeah, conditions, absolutely. Combank, it's a 30 nil job. So it doesn't take much to, to go against you. But to be fair, you, and you can only sort of beat what's in front of you. And, and they, they were big outsiders as well yeah. in that game. So um, Lockie Galvin, Shug. Love him. Uh, much improved to the Tigers. And, and Benji's, to this point, is doing a good job. And then you're starting to see people, well, um, he's playing golf. He's. I'm not sure they were wearing the grey blazer as well before the Sharkies game. I think there's definitely a correlation with the coaching staff buttoned oh, up. I think they looked. Grey blazer on. Good look. Two wins. In it. Very good look. Good look. I like it. Very good look. It, it's youthful, but it's formal. I it's like exuberant. it. Dolphins were coming third this time last year. So it, it's a long, long Slot. trek in front of us. Yep. Uh, Parramatta's attack in that game was, dare I say, Titans-esque at times. A lot of ball, then side to side. Wow, they're, they're, they are in a world of hurt, the Titans. Um, worst attack in the NRL, four tries. All the stats are against them. I called them on Saturday night. They were horrific. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't see them turning this around unless they make mass changes. Again, I see Tanner Boyd and Kieran Foran at the halves. Yeah, I don't. It's, it's got to be Foran and, and um, Brimson, Brimson, doesn't it? It has to be. It has, has to, to be. be. Now, I wasn't expecting this start, this sort of start to the year. I was really keen on them to, to go well this year. There was always a caveat of no Jaden Campbell, no Fafita early. So there was always that Ooh. little question mark. But I'm not sure even with those two in, and even with a fit Tino last week, potentially, they weren't really going to do much. But of all the, non, of all the changes that weren't non-force or injury, it looks they've dropped Lofi Khan Pereira. And that's They're the it. winger. Now, well, he doesn't get metres for them. That's the problem. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I'm they've sure. They've lost Philip Sami, who is a big metre gainer. Their issues are far wider than Lofi on a wing. Who, of course, he's just he's a just a known finisher. But you know the, the rules. When a team's struggling, the wing is the first to go. <laughs> Massive weekend of wet weather. Uh, 300 millimetres or so is expected Southeast Queensland and a lot of New South Wales. Sure, in all honesty, we are now going to think, oh, unders every game, the line all of a sudden becomes attractive. Is that a misnomer? 
Uh, no, not usually. It was the theory was given a clip around the ears in the Broncos Cowboys game where that title got smashed because I think the well, the rain caught me a bit by surprise. I didn't see it have it being that heavy for that long into the game. I think it was forty three and a half, and within about five minutes, it jumped forty and a half. And almost clicked the over at half time. That was yeah. a, that was a very strange first half in those conditions. Uh, no, you want to be you want to be with a big plus and a low total in so, games like this. Okay, definitely it definitely matters. And I th- there's a few teams that are going to play in these conditions that we might naturally think that don't suit them. The Warriors being one on Saturday, but if you, you don't think it suits them, no, no. Well, in, history would say that this is not a Warriors type scenario. But the way Andrew Webster has them playing, their stats suggest they're very good with the ball. They don't offload. They're they're pretty tight. Mm. I don't think it'll bother them that much. Uh, it's a lot of rain. It is a lot of rain. It's uh, Doncaster Day. Yeah, in Sydney, you can set your watch to it every year. And the Dodd, our man, the Dodd, the Irishman, yes. he likes Lady Laguna at seventeen dollars. Oh, week. it's got the Joel, Eddie Maguire, uh, rubbing hands <laughs> seal of approval. Can I make this observation as a complete outsider to racing? Uh, I think the Autumn Carnival has really suffered because of the Everest. The Everest is now such a major event. There's not as much juice mainstream with the autumn. I totally agree with that. Yeah, fair point. I'd forgotten. Easter Saturday, I'm thinking, oh my God, it's a big day because I did the night game. And sometimes I like to have a punt, sometimes I don't. And I thought, I was about to drive in to to do the Gold Coast game, but I thought, I completely forgot it's a big day at Randwick. Yeah. And you didn't hear anything about it on the mainstream news. Right, uh, let's get to uh, Melbourne and Brisbane, a fabulous Thursday night game. And the big news, obviously, Hughes and Munster back. I mean, I think we're going to look back towards the end of the season and realise how well Melbourne did without them, uh, particularly Munster. Coming off the bye, Christian Welsh is back as well. Haven't lost at home against Brisbane in uh, eight years. For Brisbane, Ben Takura debuts. Now, nickname alert, we can't call every very tall person the towering inferno. I think the boxer, Fundura, I think that's his. I need evidence that Ben Takura was the towering inferno before this week. Am I, f- am I right no, here? Fair call. You yeah. can't just call, it, call him, I don't know, the chimney or the giraffe or something big. It doesn't matter what. Big Lurch. bench. Big Ben. Big, big ben. ben. Big Sugar. Ben. Big Ben. Thank you. Big Ben. Thank you. So. <laughs> he's got, apparently he's got five centimetres on Nelson. Is that true? But how tall is he? He's 205. <laughs> Oh, jeez. You've been listening to the wrong shows. Um, <laughs> I believe I fell into that. That's, and a, Nelson, flat, that's Nel- a flat special. Of course it is. <laughs> Nelson, by the way, um, he's playing for North Sydney. There's something cooking something there, isn't there? Something's not right. Nelson, a sofa Solomon. It might be a masterstroke. Bellamy might have him there for a month, oh. comes back to conquer the world. But they can't go that deep oh. without a fit Nelson, a oh. sofa Solomon. I actually had a wild... This is you, to a T, a real left-field idea. Should Melbourne go after Tavita Pangoy? They need size. They need size desperately in, at the big end of, uh, of the season. But can you trust him to just tuck it under his arm and bash it forward, which is all Bellamy would want him to do? I reckon there is a lot of people who have their calendar reminder set because a lot of them with the salary cap are pretty, pretty much spent. However, the pro rata rule, mm. if you wait till about eight rounds to go, mm. all of a sudden you're paying bugger all to get him. There's a lot of people who have easily got two or 300000 just keeping that to go... Mate, there's no doubt one of the best bets you'll ever get is round 18, Tavita Pangai Jr. is playing with a club. Somewhere. Well, it's yeah. likely to be Brisbane. Yeah. We all think it's going to be the Broncos. Yeah. Anyway, this game, uh, Melbourne. Sean, I'll start with you. Pretty strong favourites here. Obviously still no Reese Walsh. Minus six and a half. Uh, Brisbane absolutely smashed Melbourne in the finals last year, but that was a different circumstance. That was up there. Yeah, surprised myself. When I first looked at this game before sitting down and actually uh, pricing it, I thought every day of the week I'd be on the Broncos. But I've, I've actually got the number to a scenario where I can make the Storm a, a very small bet. I've got it around the eight-point favourite mark. Amy Park is huge. And I know that the result for the Broncos last week is very, very hard to get out of your head, but... Reynolds just had an absolute day out. Those conditions with his ability to, to put the ball on a dime, spinning like it does. Scotty Drinkwater had an absolute uh, night to forget. So I think the result probably favours him a touch. No Haas, and I know Tristan Saylor was good, but Walsh is still a significant out. I've got, yeah, I'm sticking up for the Melbourne Storm here, but only, only very slightly. At the line, 
I, I don't know. I, I'd probably lean towards the Broncos, to be honest, mm. plus six and a half. Uh, but I've got a flare ready to go, Ooh. boys. Woo! Here we go. <laughs> This bloke, Ryan Pappenhausen, I love, and I shared this stat last week. He's scoring in about, I think it's 54 games starting at fullback, 47 tries. It's a crazy number. Incredible. So just going for flair, for him to score the first, second or third try, maybe a low-scoring affair, four bucks. I have an idea for a new stat that Sean can do, because I don't know what he does for the rest of the week. <laughs> right In golf, they have a stat, which some respect and some don't, it's putting distance. So this guy putted for 180 feet today, which means he must have dra- jagged a couple of long ones. Average minute of when Ryan Pappenhausen scores a try. And for anyone, actually, that should be the average minute anyone scores a try. I just think that'd be interesting. See, Ryan Pappenhausen might be an early try scorer. Oh, uh, yeah. So he time might of, be a late. So we've got the, we do have the time of first try market, but not yes. specific to a player. No, no, no. I'm not saying as a market. I'm just saying as one of those stats that we uh, look at and we okay. say, well, Ryan Pappenhausen, it's really interesting you say first, second or third because his average time of scoring is the 34th minute, which yeah. puts him in the frame. Or he scores X percent in the last quarter of the game. That's that exactly sort of right. Uh, well, Adam Fadua Blake, he would skew heavy to that first quarter. Oh, absolutely. All right, so Pat Papa has three tries in three games. He's quietly motoring along nicely. Canterbury and the Roosters. Uh, the, now, this is the first of the wet weather games that we expect. We expect 10 and a half is the line we're going with here on a Wednesday morning. Uh, Addo Carr is out. Uh, geez, that was a nasty concussion. Jacob Preston out for six weeks. So Wilson comes back in. Josh Curran is in. Sam Hughes, I'm glad to see him starting for the Dogs. It took a few more weeks than I thought. And Kitiani Kautonga will play uh, the second game of his career. Big one for the Roosters, Joel, is Lindsay Collins comes back. Um, yes, they, were, they weren't, weren't close to Penrith, albeit they lost by six, but they were pretty well outplayed, but... Penrith's different gravy, obviously, so it's probably a forget run. And for form line-wise, and I know it doesn't work this way, but Roosters smash South, South beat Canterbury, big outs, Preston and the Fox. I know the weather is a big concern taking on a big line, but I'm I'm very confident the Roosters. Oh, jeez, <clears throat> OK. Uh, I'll say this for Canterbury. They've troubled the Roosters their last two meetings. 25-24 last year in Gosford. And they actually beat the Roosters the year before. I think it was a similar... I think it might have been a Friday 6pm or Saturday 5.30. Similar conditions. So for whatever reason, they've almost had the Roosters number. Yeah, and look, there's definitely a a pretty sizable gap between the two teams. But they're both facing very similar issues. Uh, One in attack is certainly an issue for the Bulldogs. To a lesser extent, the Roosters. But still don't really have it humming. But their defence, both of them have been pretty good. Doggies conceded 132 play the balls in their defensive 20. Roosters 143. That's 17th and 16th. So they've conceded, or one or two, depending on which way you look at it. So they've conceded the most, only let in six tries apiece. So the, the Doggies have actually found a bit of resolve defensively. And I think with the rain, two average attacks, but two really strong defensive outfits, big, big plus. Only six tries apiece. Big plus from play the balls in oh, that right. range. Okay. Um, Ten and a half. Just have to be with it, Shulk. Okay. But it... Diametrically opposed. Diametrically. Okay. Uh, Newcastle versus St George Illawarra suddenly becomes a pretty tasty Friday night game, given what the Dragons did to Manly uh, on Saturday night. And the fact the Knights, again, are in a state of needing a win. That was a pretty good game on um, Sunday against the Warriors. But again, the halves are the issue. So it's Cogger and Hastings, third halves combination in five weeks. He's an odd, he's an odd flower, Jackson Hastings. Uh, Dane Gagai is well, it's just <laughs> an odd flower. He's <laughs> just yeah, he's an exotic flower. Leo Thompson is back, and well, he's he's. I'm he's keen to dive it. into this. What flower would he be? <laughs> I don't know, but it'd be unique. It'd be one. I don't know. Dane Gagai is back. Just an interesting character. St George Illawarra. Uh, Michael Molo returns, but pretty much the same outfit that. Uh, Beat an odd manly team. That was a strange performance from them. Nine, six and a half favourites. I feel like this is the right halves combo. And we said, like, yeah. Cogger and Hastings. But I couldn't touch that $1.39 no. for the Knights. No way. No. Um, oh, no, leave me out of it. The right-hand side, which I'll get to in a moment, for the Dragons, still a problem. Yeah, the Knights, the, the result for them last week, I think, uh, flattered them. The Warriors, for some reason, can't really put teams away. No, they can't. And then you spin back even further, two weeks ago, 
night at home, which is obviously their bread and butter against that Melbourne Storm outfit who had everyone missing um, and only just fell over. If that game goes for five or ten minutes longer, they're losing that game. Yeah, Dragons on the road does scare me a little bit, but six and a half, that's a, that's a key number. I'd, I'd be just leaning the way of them. It's probably irrelevant, but the Dragons have a great record over the years in Newcastle. I think they've won... 10 of their last four. They've won 10 of their last 14 overall, but something like seven of their last 10. And in fact, ever since the joint venture started, they've always done well at Marathon Stadium. Newcastle, a first half team, plus 18 first half, minus 41 second half. So maybe Newcastle for half time, Dragons full time. This is an odd stat. The, the Knights have conceded three first half tries. That's it. And 11 in the second half. So make of that what you will. Dragons yet to be in a close game. Like, uh, like one that's gone right down to the distance. I know Manly, it was competitive, but um, they haven't been in one of those games that's been a one-score contest with half an hour to go. Uh, so I'd like to see them in a close game to see how they handle it. Sal, who's got the flair? Oh, I've got the flair. Woo! Woo! Now, I mentioned the right-hand side for the Dragons remains a problem. Last three weeks, the left centres keep scoring. Kohler scored last week. We tipped you him. We tipped uh, Holmes the week before, and Avarillo scored the week before. So, Bradman best up against the right hand side. First, second, or third, Ooh. four bucks. Don't mind it. You can yeah. tell when Joel likes a market. First, second, third try scorer. That's his. He's found that, hasn't he? That's yeah. yeah. It's like when you try a skim latte for the first time, and you go, "I don't mind. I'll, that's going to be my coffee going <laughs> forward." First, second, or third try scorer. Can we, speaking of markets that we love, we skipped over my flair bet. Oh, I'm sorry. My, my, no, that, that was mine. I missed it as well. In the Bulldogs Roosters game, halftime draw. I love this little market. That correlates. I reckon that's going to correlate with your best bet. Of course it does. Is that right? It certainly yes. does. Yes. What, you're involving the Bulldogs in a best bet? Absolutely. Oh, dear God. Yeah. Absolutely, I Dear God. So, how are your best bets going this year? Like before, okay, last week was no good, but. Well, prior to that, I, would, I was. Three and zero. Oh, four, four, it was four. Okay. It was four only lost it one. Was four and zero. Oh. So all right, okay. Well, I've only lost one now too. And so then it was eighteen nil. If you didn't know that, <laughs> hey, still got paid. <laughs> all right. Um, South Sydney versus New Zealand Warriors. This is a fascinating game. I can't believe the Warriors are as bloated as they are at dollar eighty one. Have people not been watching football the last month? I know it's here in Sydney. Three o'clock game. Alex Johnston out. I told you you should have put that market up, Sean. Would he get the Ken <laughs> Irvine? We could have got nice odds because obviously he's going to be out for a few. Not that we want to see that. That that was pretty nasty to see him walk off the way he did. Uh, yet to lead at half time this year, South. Here's my stat of the week. They've led three of the last 17 half times. Three yeah, of their last 17. Uh, first half, they're terrible uh, and have been for some time. But versus the Warriors, they've won eight straight, Joel. Eight straight. Including last year when the Warriors were starting to come together, South punished them. That was mid-season, 28-6 to six at Mount Smart. Warriors, no Metcalf, no Capel. Tamari Martin comes in at number six. Last week, we saw one and a half pulled up for the Gold Coast Titans versus Dolphins. And I'm looking at this the same way, going, one and a half? Warriors are a far better side. Um, in every metric you want to look at, I just have to be on the Warriors, boys. I'm, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm so confident about it. Yeah. I, again, a little bit like the, the Storm Broncos game, I immediately just thought I'd want to be all in on the Warriors here. But it's one and a half. I've got it slightly bigger than that. So there's a few games here where I'm almost on the edge. I'm just leaning that way. But I don't, I don't think this is as obvious as what it looks on paper. For some reason, the Warriors, they have so much footy um, but can't really put teams away. Chance comes back. That's good. Yeah. We see the hybrid. Roger Roger played it right at fullback, didn't yeah. he? If Canterbury have a polished halfback, how many do they win last week and how many do they win by? That's right. I thought they were far superior. Yeah. So I just don't see how South have improved at all from the 48 6 for the Roosters. Warriors should be 4 0. Right? They should have beaten Cronulla in. I know could have should have yeah, okay. But I agree. they were better than Cronulla and they let that go. Well done, Cronulla, for coming back. Melbourne, obviously, the coach miracle, but the Warriors absolutely dominated the second half and they've won the last two. I agree with you. I'm a bit worried about their lack of ability to blow sides apart. I, I'm very worried about South. So I'm not touching one and a half Warriors. What I am touching, woo, woo try a bet. Woo! Minus eight and a half. Ooh. Minus eight and a half. I, I figure if South are going to win, they're going to win, but if the Warriors are going to win, they might blow, it, blow this away. 
two nine. It's it, it, it's got every chance of being a non-atmosphere game at Homebush, low crowd, Saturday Arvo, rain, rain. Uh, and poor. We've seen South lose interest already this year. Two ninety five for a try bet. I also like the halftime full time double. I figure if the Warriors are going to win, don't take the dollar eighty one. Take halftime full time because march away. The, the, you, you're going to get a nice. Odds and they, I should, reckon, they should be up at the break. I honestly believe, my gut feel, they're the number one threat to Penrith this year at this stage. Who's your number one threat to the Panthers? I've still got the Broncos. The Broncos. A, a fully fit Broncos have got the, I and mean, we saw it, have got the game style to really worry them. Threat to Penrith yes. is Brisbane. He's right, but not, they're not the second best team in the comp. No, Melbourne's the second best team in the comp, but they're not the biggest threat to gotcha. Penrith. Manly versus Penrith. Ah, this was going to be two weeks ago, undefeated Manly versus the Premiers. It was going to be early match of the year contender, but now Manly have dropped their bundle. Um, three and a half they're getting. Only three and a half? No Nathan Cleary. But we saw what Penrith did to the Roosters without Nathan Cleary. And James Fisher-Harris is back. Tommy Talao comes in for the Seagulls. Penrith have won eight straight against Manly. Odd stat have scored 10 tries on their right, the Panthers, only two on their left. So um, I, I just find that, so Brian Toto areas, two tries, Sunia Taruva, six tries, 10 in total. Yeah, so they're very also, much a right side attack. It's very much Cleary on that right hand side for a lot of that. And Jerome wants to go left foot, left foot, left foot, go back that side as well. There's a, a little hate map that I've been playing around with Sugar. Dylan Edwards heavily involved on the right hand side as well. Yeah, He's like taking his game to a another level this year as well. He's, yeah. a, he's a genuine gun now. Are you making goo goo eyes with Dylan? The way you, I mean, you've been at Tedesco. No, long. no, you but it won't, Teddy. it won't get anywhere near. The I mean, are we at the games. seven year itch of Teddy? I mean, the, the fair, <laughs> we've worked together for that long. We're probably ready for a seven year itch. No, it won't be. It won't be Dylan. Okay, Manly Penrith. <laughs> it won't be Dylan. It'll be Reese Walsh in his cowboy hat. Used there. <laughs> yeah, go on. Manly Penrith. Give me, give me a, um, a a very quick view on the game. Penrith. I know, and it, it, it's always hard to get last week's result out of your head when you're when you're punting and tipping teams. They did go off five and a half point underdogs to the Roosters. Now you're at Brookvale and you're giving up three and a half. Manly and particularly Tommy Turbo won't play that bad ever again. There was just some basic errors that you will never see again from him. And I'm sticking up for uh, I'm sticking up for Manly Ooh. at home. Are we looking at an ambush? By the way, Tommy Tillard did play last week. He was a very late inclusion. Uh, Joel? Fisher Harris, a big in. Um, I'm just scorned from tipping against yeah, them yeah. last week. Um, they're so systematic. Yeah. We'll talk about that in the Fox League show. But I just. Oh, there's a it, They are just so put together <laughs> and so systemised. Well done for not calling it the main body there as well. Yes. Uh, Anthony Seabold, last year in this game. They threw caution to the wind. So they opened the shoulders yeah. up, which is fine, and it worked for a while, but it can also quickly fall apart. So I think they might even try the same thing, a bit of a lavish brand of football. But if it goes wrong, mm. Penrith will just keep accumulating. Yeah. Backing against Penrith is like backing against prime Tom Brady or current Patrick Mahomes. That's right. You just don't do it. I like Manly here, but there ain't no way. Oh, I'm calling this game anyway, so I, I stay away. But... I ain't betting it against Penrith anytime soon, Sean. Yeah, I'm sticking up for Manly, but this flair woo, woo! actually ties in maybe to what uh, you just spoke about, Sugar. I think they probably have to get off to a fast start, but Penrith over 80 will just grind you away and drag you down. But we're following a bit of a trend here. Manly three times this year, they've scored first, they've lost two of them. And the exact flip for the Panthers, they've conceded three times, but they've actually won two as well. Getting about $4.50 woo! or 60 thereabouts. Okay. Now, just to confirm, that includes penalty goals. So if Manly score, score first. Goal, two nil. Yep. Not that's first score try. First. Score first. Dol, we've got to hurry it along here, gents. Great game. Dolphins Tigers. Suddenly a great game. First versus sixth. A, a, a true match of the night. Saturday, seven thirty at Suncorp. Dolphins dollar fifty nine. Tigers three two thirty seven. That'll obviously change one way or the other. Uh, Latu Fainu comes in. Jaden Sullivan, the number six. Oh, I'm interested if Sullivan starts or Latu. No, he will probably keep it that way. Uh, this I think this is the tightest game of the weekend. Sean, I'm going to start with you. This uh, I don't have a huge view in this game, but it, it just has a feeling that it could be the week that you might just want to get against West Tigers. A couple of wins in a row. They're on the road. Galvin, for an 18-year-old, is a, is a big out. Yeah. And the, the combo, as named, I don't love, even if the kid comes on again. 
fair bit of pressure. Um, just looks suitable for a for a fins win here. Oh, I, think, I think you might be able to get around the fins. 13 plus or something like that. I have no statistical evidence, but the Finns, goal are pretty good at putting <laughs> sides away when they're supposed to. Well, they got this points. might be one of those. They've got points in uh, the hammer. And uh, <coughs> another bloke I'm going to go for here is the flare bet. Woo! Um, I'm finding it really hard to find a bet. When I'm in that case, I look for a try scorer who's at a price. Jake Avarillo. I told you, skim latte. First, second, third That's try it. scorer. Has he, got it? Has he tipped it again? He's done it, it again. again. <laughs> done it again. My three flare bets this week are all first, second or third. Love it. <laughs> yes. All right, Jake Avarillo. Is this the way to do it? <laughs> North Queensland, Gold Coast, Sunday Arvo. Uh, same 17 for the uh, Go uh, North Queensland side that lost to Brisbane. For Gold Coast, they've lost 24 of their last 28 away. For feet of bench again, not necessarily that has to be the case, but that's where he's been named. Average losing margin for Gold Coast in that run, 10. When they lose, uh, usually handily enough. What's the start here? Oh, six, 16 and a half. <laughs> 16 and a half. Are we entering flat track bully territory for North Queensland? They, they could actually cover this line pretty comfortably. They could. They absolutely could. Uh, best attack in the comp versus worst attack in the comp. Just over 30 points a game for the Cowboys. I just, I'm, Tanner Boyd for me is not the answer. They, they have to go to Kieran Foran mm -hmm. and Brimson. AJ. At least try that. Just needs to touch the footy a lot yeah. more than what he is. Yeah. Staple so, to, that, to that one up, edge. Up there, I'll take the cows. Yeah, look, look it, it's a very scary proposition. It's lines like these you might not see until round 18, 19, 20 when you know, teams are completely given up. It's a very scary thought, but just at how big it is, I'm going to I'm going to give the Titans a chance. Oh, jeez! You got wow. you got so much on your late covers. Yeah, yeah. a lot has to go right. To cover I'd I'd numbers. be very un. If it was, <laughs> I think fifteen and a half, and sixteen and a half. There's a whole world of difference there. Mm. I've got the flair. Woo! New wingers for Gold Coast, and they have shown they're conceding thirty a game anyway. Murray Talungi, left wing, two tries. Uh, that's my flair. Three forty-five. Canberra versus Parramatta, Sunday night, last match of the round. Interesting match. I, I said Dolphins, Tigers could be the tightest. So could this very easily. Ricky Stewart, uh, you know he gave him a blast. You know he gave him a proper <laughs> blast after the Canberra debacle. Rappin is 200th for Canberra. Second home game for uh, Canberra. And Parramatta without Moses, eight of their last 11, they have lost, and they've only averaged 15 points in those games. So, yeah. I mean, it's we knew it was a problem and statistically proven so. All aboard the Ricky train here. Uh, you learn some stuff from press conferences. He jammed the bench. Yeah. He really made a call out for the bench. I love when they said, so Tim, Tim McCoy played well. None of them played well. Um, but these benches are going to come off just breathing fire, and I'm going to have something on one of the benches in a try-scoring market. Wow. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Who do you think he went? I, I thought it was aimed at Horsburgh, to be honest. Horsburgh didn't have a particularly good Yeah, day. probably. But that, I think Xavier Savage might have got a talking to as well at some point um, in the sheds. There was a bit. That was a big turning point in that game. The the kick chase where he just sort oh, of thought it, was, it was, thought it was trickling out and he did not chase at all. They score off the back of it. Might have been the second one. Not, I can't remember. But big moments in games. Um, yeah, he's given him a bake and you want to see him respond. And I think they will at home. It's perfect. No, Moses, obviously huge for the Parramatta Reels. I'm sticking up for Raiders just. Can't believe I'm climbing back on the horse, but I think it's a little bit bigger than what it is. I like your flea here, Sean, because yeah. I think I know why you're going this way. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm sort of tipping Raiders in the game, but purely at the <laughs> price. Sean Lane, anytime try scorer. Now, Brown's got the seven on his back, but Look he's still... Look at those odds. Yeah, he's still going to be hard on the... or dominant on the left-hand side of the field, which is uh, Sean Lane's edge. And there's just a few things around Jamal Fogarty, but also Hosking's out. They've got a new combination. It'll be Adam Mariotta, I believe his name. Who's a middle normal. Yeah, he's named on the edge, so I'm sure they'll work it out eventually. But first up, combinations are, are tricky, and, and Sean Lane, well, he loves a try, and that's a big price for him. Yeah, all right, nice find. Hopefully it gets up. Would he play Tarpany there instead? I don't think he moved, Joey. No. Smithies? Smithies is too busy in the middle. Maybe Smithies. Yeah. Yeah, maybe Smithies. All right, uh, time for best bets. Uh, Sean, uh, you kick us off. I think rain is going to heavily feature among these best bets. Yeah, I'm just glad I'm not uh, the anchor of this uh, multi this week. We're at Friday, 6pm, Bulldogs, Roosters. Now, I can make an argument for this bet, even if it's not 
wet weather. So I think the rain is a bit of a bonus. Under 38 and a half, I said it going through the game, but two struggling attacks, but both defending uh, very, very well. And I think that if the Bulldogs are going to win, I think they just need a scrounge one out because their attack doesn't scream, obviously, putting a team away. Um, 38 and a half, I can make a good case for. Can I just say the Joel best bet is the one we all wanted. We're all going to have it. All three of us, but Joel got in first, and fair play to him. He got in on the WhatsApp. So. He got in last week. It was so that early. Far away. Okay, so it, it, be warned, punters. Be a little bit nervous because I usually get nervous when I'm so confident, mm. and I am so confident about this. Warriors minus one and a half. I just I have to take it. You just yes. have to. Sure. Yeah, I, if you didn't, I would have. So uh, looking at the scraps that were left for me, I've taken Dolphins, <laughs> Tigers, unders. Now, Dolphins can score points, so it does worry me. But if it's going to rain as much as we're hearing, especially in southeast Queensland, Tigers have been defending very well. I don't think they've got many points in them, so I actually think the Dolphins might win comfortably enough, but under 42 and a half. The unders have been good to me so far this year, so I'm cheering for bad football. And so are you, Sean, with mm. uh, Bulldogs Roosters. So we are killjoys, but hopefully we're rich killjoys. They are our best bets. Oh, time for Bambi! Right, now, now I, I apparently have got the reins here and I'm happy to have them, but you wanted to play this Vision 2. Do you want to explain what it was, or should I play the Vision? Play it. I I'll play the Vision. Throw it up and then... So this is from, what, Easter Monday? Jeremy Piven has done every... Blo Ari Goal from Entourage has done every media outlet and uh, it's the same bit, just yell and be foul doing it, and I love it. Here he is, I think, being well-behaved with uh, Channel 7. Amazing to be here. I'm a little overwhelmed at the size of this field. I, I'm winded looking at it. These guys have to be in insane shape. There's love for me in Australia because Ari Gold loves to take the piss, and that's the national pastime here. <laughs> IFL footy, have you had much exposure to it? Have you got a team yet? I think that's a pretty important thing. Um, I, I want to say the Bulldogs because yeah. I, I love French Bulldogs, but that really doesn't sound like I have any idea what I'm talking yeah. about. Right. Now, what's uh, cut out there is when he says the size of the field, right, and, 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 and there's a very good observation. The players must be super fit. The interview, I think it's Abby Holmes, does a very good job, yep. but she did what every Melbourne host does. Every Melbourne host. So he's talking about the field, right, and about the fitness of the players. So what do you think of the M our MCG? <laughs> <laughs> Every Melbourne personality has to have be, get validated about the MCG, which I give you is the best stadium in the country. I'm not arguing the virtue of the MCG. But JFK could rise from the dead, take his first steps on earth at the MCG on Easter Monday, and they'd go, JFK, you've just returned to earth after 65 years. What do you think of the G? <laughs> Let it go. Why do you need value? And I'm not, this is not a shot at Melbourne people. It is a shot at Melbourne media. Why do you need your venue validated? It doesn't make you a better person. It doesn't make you any, <laughs> any, any better because you've got this magnificent stadium, which I acknowledge. I said it before, I'll say it again. It's the best stadium in the country. But Jeremy Piven, do you not think he's been in a big stadium in the United States? Do you think he's that impressed by the G? <laughs> Taylor Swift performs. Taylor Swift. What do you think they wrote in The Age and The Herald Sun? What about the G? <laughs> what about the MCG? Anyway, I'm glad I got that off my chest. Well said. And thanks to our Melbourne production team doing an excellent <laughs> job for us. What were you going to say? No, you said everything far more uh, beautifully than I was ever going to get there, Dan. So well done. What do you think of that? <laughs> uh, remember, Fox League, yes. Thursday night. After Matty Johns, uh, thank you for watching us the first time. Hopefully you watch us again and uh, enjoy your weekend. Joel? Best tip, though, of course, uh, no matter who you bet with, please take a sec before you bet and set up a deposit limit. We'll catch you next time. What's gambling really costing you? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.